Okay, so I want to give you kind of a, a revised look at our calendar for between here and the end of the year. And it's good news because I thought, oh my gosh, we had one whole more chapter to cover all of next week. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, how am I going to do this? And we decided as a team, no, this is how we're going to do it. So I just want to share that with you guys so you felt good about everything with y'all's self, okay? All right, clear. All right, so today's Wednesday, right? Yep. So we're going to go over the homework, and then I'm going to give you a little bit of a review packet because tomorrow we have a test. Thanks for the notice. What? Less than 24 hours, sorry. And then Friday, we will do worksheet 1A, and then Monday, we'll do worksheet 1B, and then Tuesday, it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to, I'm going to get a Chrome cart in here, I imagine you guys can use a Chromebook, um, and it's called an hour of code. Oh, yeah. Okay? Now, here's the deal. We're going to go through one of the things pretty simply with it, and then I'm going to say, all right, if you choose to do this other one, this is what you have to do, and then you send me the information. And that would go in as a 20-point quiz grade, which could help your grade. And if you're like, I can do that. Uh, okay, good. And then Wednesday next week and Thursday next week and Friday next week, we will have review days for our final exam. Okay? And then the Monday, so let's see. So this is this week, this is next week. Still with me? And then the week after we start final. So you got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then that's it on the following week. This Monday we will start the uh, start the final. And then I think on Tuesday we have our final in here. And then we don't have this class Wednesday and Thursday. I think I got that right. I think. Because I have to check, double check. Yeah. So Friday is just like a day off for you all. And it's a teacher work day. So like if you miss the final, if you're like, dude, I'm sick on Tuesday, then you can come to school and make up your final if you were sick that day. Wait, our final is Tuesday? Or Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, no, like this class. I think it's Tuesday. I think. Yes. I think. Yeah. Because oh, I have like three hours. Okay. I think if I'm if I'm off, it might be Wednesday. And I'm sorry if I'm off. Huh? Second period is the first final. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You might be right. I I I, I can't dispute it. It sounds good. I like your schedule. If you want to do it that way, I'll go with, that, yeah, with you on that. It goes 284. 284? 482? Okay, that's 11th period, then 19th period, and then 23rd period. Oh, Like, dude, I'm in. Okay. You have a prep time, then period 284, and then you have 361, So this is 284? 284. And then? And then? And then okay, and then Friday is uh, the 18th, which Star Wars is out then, so you should go see it. Yeah, but no applause, just so much. Wow! Hey, sound good? God bless you. Okay. All right, here we go. Shh, clear and ink. No, oh, man. I want Jar Jar to come back. Dude, yeah. All right. Um, yeah, you know, everyone's entitled to their own feelings about Jar Jar. It's just I know this, that if you do like Jar Jar, your grade just lowered 18%. <laughs> <laughs> and if you hate them, your grade just went up. Yep. All right. Here we go. Let's run through these real quick, make sure we're okay with it. Um, this is from the worksheet. This is on page 100 and 
15 of your workbook. Uh, just to give you a heads up, second semester, there will be another workbook for you to go and get over in the bookstore. Okay. Oh, oh. I wasted my life in Wildwood. All right. First problem. Um, things I should know about this. It's going to be solid or dotted. Crystal. Huh? Solid or dotted? That is, why is it one or the other? Why would it be one or the other? So if I have the little equal sign under here, it means it's going to be solid. If it's just this or this, dotted. If it's this or this, solid. Okay. So it's going to be a dotted line. So this, this tells me right here, dotted. Okay. And I went through the final... And I was kind of going to run through some of the problems. And I will tell you that on a multiple choice portion of the final, take your phone and your student ID, please. Um, on the final, there will be a multiple choice of this type of thing. And one of them does have a dotted versus a solid. So, like if A is the solid and B is the dotted, and you're supposed to choose the dotted and you choose A, you got it wrong on a multiple choice. Okay? Make sense? Um, how's that one set up to graph? Yes, sir. Yeah. Cover method works for me. Okay, so if 5x equals 20, what is x equal to? Four. So in the x direction, one, two, three, four. Put the dot. Uh, if negative two y equals twenty, what is y equal to? Negative ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then, oh, I made an error. This line is not dotted. So you don't mind me. Get out of there. Uh, <laughs> you can't kick that high. Okay, this is going to indicate it's a dotted line. How's that? All right, a good test point would be zero zero. Why am I picking zero zero as a test point? One, it's easy, and two, it's it's definitely a, a one-sided line on the other. So we're trying to figure out where we're going to have a true, true scenario. So if 0, 0 gives us a true, that means we're going to shade that side. If 0, 0 is false, I'm going to shade the other side of the line. Still make sense? So I'm going to get 5 times 0 minus 2 times 0 is greater than or equal to, or greater than 20. So that means 0 is greater than 20. Is that true or false? False. False. So everything over here is false. So everything over here would be true, and I'm going to shade over here. Agree? Yes. I like it. Correct. Problem number two, Crystal. Solid or dotted? Solid. Why is that? Yeah, yeah, you got it. Yeah, because that. So this is solid. I like it. All right. Is this set up to do a cover method? Uh-uh. This one is set up to do what? The what? What's my y-intercept? Nine. Nine. So this right here is going to say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Put a dot. And then I have a slope of what? Three over one. So I'm going to go down three over one. Solid line. I'm going to pick zero, zero because it's easy and also because it's on the origin. It's on the origin and it's on one side of the line or the other. Okay. Now you can get the kids sitting there going, well, how do you know one side versus the other? Which one, which side is one side? Which side is the other? You get a pick. Um, so zero, zero, we'll plug it in. So that's going to be zero is less than or equal to negative three times zero plus nine. Zero is less than or equal to nine. True or false? Uh, true. That's true. So that means everything over here is true. And do I say this true side? Yeah, so over here is shaded. Gotcha. If there's time, we'll do it later. But I'm running out of time. All right. 
third problem, though, is it kind of looks like it's set up like the second problem, but Y has something attached to it. What does it have attached to it? Three. It has a three. So what should I do with that three to make it look like this equation? Yeah, I'm going to divide everything by three. Hey, how you doing? Good. Hey, very little. For, oh, he's not here today. He's hiding. Okay, if you find him, though, send him here. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, so if I divide everything by 3, those are going to cancel. I'm going to get y is greater than negative 8 thirds plus 2 thirds x. And I guess I could rewrite it to look like this. Crystal, is this solid or dotted? Dotted. Dotted. Why is that? Because of the thing. I like the thing. It's only the this or the this. It's not the this or the this, right? Okay, dotted. I did what? I did what? All right, so let's graph this. Whoop, whoop. Um, oh, my gosh. How do I graph negative 8 thirds? Let's see. Negative 8 thirds. That's 8 over 3 is the same thing as 2 and 2 thirds, right? And it's negative. So negative 2 and 2 thirds. 1, 2, 3. Negative 2 and 2 thirds is like here. Huh? Mm -hmm. Um, we'll take it. Well, I, I will tell you that this right here is the same thing as this as a mixed number. So if I go down negative 1, negative 2, and go down about 2 thirds of the way, it should be right there. And then you're like, but I don't get how this works. Okay, so watch this. Ready? From here to here is 1. From here to here is another. And then I'm going to go right 3. 1, 2, 3. And Crystal said it's dotted, which I like. That's a much better dotted line than this fictitious looking thing. Uh, I'm picking 0, 0 because it's an easy point, and it also does not do what? It's on one side. It's on one side. This side, actually, on this one, it's on the other side. Okay. It's not on one side. All right, so uh, George is confused. Come on, man. All right, I'm just kidding. All right, so I'm going to plug 0, 0 in. So I'm going to 3 times 0 is greater than negative 8 plus 2 times 0. So 0 is greater than negative 8. Is that true or false? That's true. So that means everything up here is true, which means I'm going to shade that region, and we'll call it good. Ooh! I like it. Almost done. Uh, this one. Cover method, still with me? Why am I choosing cover method? Because x and y are on one side and some numbers on the other. So if I cover up this and I get negative x equals negative 6, what's x equal to? 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. If I cover this up, I get negative 2y equals negative 6, so y is equal to what? Negative 3? 3, 3. A positive 3. I like it. 1, 2, and 3. Solid or dotted? What do you think? Dotted. dotted. A little bit. Zero, zero looks like a good point because it's on the other, not on one side. It's on the other. Uh, plug zero, zero in, so I get zero minus zero. So zero is less than negative six. True or false? False. false. So everything down here is false. Everything on the other side of the line has to be then what? True. true. I want to shade the true side. And that's the long and the short of it. Feel good? No? They want to cry themselves to sleep? All right, I want to get you this. What we're going to do with this is we're going to kind of work backwards on this, okay? So I think on the front part, we're doing pretty good. This is um, review. All right, let's go to the back side. We'll go on the back side of this page. Go to the back side. 
And let's start, we're going to start with number 24. I'm going to kind of work backwards. You'll definitely see a problem similar to this on the exam tomorrow. Still with me? And this talks almost a word problem. So we got a story. We got a, we have characters. Yeah. Yeah. TJ could be yeah. one, and Crystal could be another character. Can I be a character? You I'm are. Character. Yes. You could be the banker. Yes. yes. I just want to be the bank robber. <laughs> Tristan is the bank robber. Oh. Oh. No, can we trade places? I'm trading. Oh. I'm trading with you. Okay. <laughs> All right, so problem number 24 says, my bank account has $350 in it. This is a rich person. I give you too many. Yeah. All right, everyone following the story? My bank account has $350 in it. Someone's got a lot of money. I start saving each week. In two weeks, I have $550 in it. This is such a great story. So... So, this is where we're starting, and then two weeks later, this is so exciting, two weeks later, it's now got $550 in this bank account. So, let's just take a shot at this. How much money did I don't contribute into the bank? 200 bucks. Now, let's just pretend that every two weeks, from here on out, I'm going to put another 200 bucks in. So, two weeks from now, another 200. Two weeks from now, another 200. Two weeks from now, another 200. So, I have some sort of slope that's going to take place. What is the x variable? Let's see. What, do you, what should we call x variable? Oh, time. Time in what? Time how? In weeks. Weeks. Like it. How do we know it's time in weeks? It says each week. Okay, so you get the one kid going, I want it to be in light years, though. Okay, well, you're crap. Okay, good, yeah. Just a number. I was about to say, I just wanted to ask you. Didn't it have to pass from you to Angel? I don't know what happened this week. Okay. So X variable is time in weeks. And then the Y variable must be what? Huh? Morning. Morning. All right, write an equation that models how much money is in your bank account. Okay, so we need to make an equation that's going to work for us. Okay, so I started out with 350 bucks. Two weeks later, I had 550 bucks in my account. So where I started out, if I start, what week have I started, did I start with? Huh? Zero. Like, hey, we're going to start this account. Okay, cool. Two weeks later, my account's what? 550. Take a look at that. Do I now have two points? So, I, you know, I'm sitting around and a guy, I was like, I think I'm going to start a bank account. I'm going to go, hey, here's 350 bucks. I'll be back in two weeks to give you an extra 200 bucks. And I'll come back two weeks later and give you another 200 bucks. So being in there 52 weeks in a year, it, 26 weeks worth of 200 bucks. And then I'm going to take all the money back. Yes. We're, we're acting like there's no interest. This is that really bad bank. They're putting it upon their customers to make their retrieve their money because of the bad housing market. I'm just saying. No. I, and, I, and I like the approach that we're going because I don't know if I would go and invest my money into a place that doesn't give me interest. I'm just saying. I I, I understand. It, it, this this is a, this goes along with Hillary Clinton plan for. Oh, oh wait, what's the same with our Donald Trump? I'm just. Woo! No, the Donald doesn't know how to say that. The Donald's going to give you some money. I hope. All right, so. Uh, I'm just kidding. Write an equation. Okay, so if I'm going to write an equation, let, let's remember this. Shh. If I'm going to write an equation, I'm going to label x1, y1, x2, y2. Remember that? Remember that? Yeah. Okay, so that means I'm going to go x1, y1, x2, y2. Sound good? I like it? 
And then I'm going to find the slope. And I know the slope equation is y, or m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And I keep writing it down because I need to know it. So do you. Okay, so let's figure out what our slope is. So I'm going to go uh, 550 minus 350 over 2 minus 0. M equals 200 over 2, which is 100. So I get a slope of 100. What do you think? All right. Okay. And then we got to go and do this. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. We're going to use point slope, point slope, in order to get our equation. Okay, so I'm going to go y, that stays as y, not label. y1, we already label as 350, so no reason to change it, equals 100 as our slope, x minus x1, which is 0. I like it. Let's distribute over the parentheses. y minus 350 equals 100 times x is 100x. 100 times 0 is 0. Add the 350. Y equals 100x plus 350. So this is our linear equation of how this banking model is going to take place. No interest included. Sorry. I'm trying to tell you good economics, but sometimes people just think that it's the bad thing. All right, explain what the slope means. 100. Can I write 100 over 1? What does my slope mean? What does the y direction mean? Money. What does the x direction mean? Weeks. So what does 100 over 1 mean in the context of our problem? $100 a week. So I am putting $100 for every one week. You're like, yeah, but it says $200 for two weeks. Okay. Same idea. I like it. Say about any what the slope means. Now, I will tell you that I saw some interesting descriptors of slope on the quiz. What does the slope mean in the context of mean? Where the where the graph goes? Yeah, but it's money over time. Where the graph goes? It's money over time. Where the graph goes? Yeah, it could be distance over time, but if we're not dealing with something like distance. Yeah, yeah, if we're not dealing with distance over time, don't tell me it's distance. All right, explain the y-intercept. Well, the y-intercept is whoop, whoop, whoop. Looks like that, right? What does this mean in the context of this problem? We're across the y-axis is an answer I got. But not in the context of this problem. What do you think? Yeah, I started off. I started off, I had 350 bucks that was in the account, and then I decided to start adding 200 bucks every two weeks, which is the same thing as adding $100 each week, but you know it is what it is. So what does the y-intercept mean? It's where we started off. It's where our money, our account started. In other contexts might be it's, it's the weight the baby was when they were born, things like that. You know, if we were dealing with a baby born really this much. How much money... Will I have after a year of doing this? So one year is 52 weeks. So which variable up there is dealing with weeks? X or Y? X. So if I plug 52 in right here, I'm going to get Y equals 5200 plus the 350. So I'm going to have after 52 weeks, 5550. Dude, I got some money. Yeah. That's walking around money. I'll buy you books for a semester at the college. <laughs> a semester. Right. There you go. For real? No. You might be able to get like McDonald's, Big Mac, once a week, too. What do you think? Does that seem doable? That will be a problem that you will definitely see that type of problem on the test tomorrow. What do they do? 5550. 5550. We don't judge. I judge very much. All right. 
It happened. Hey, we're going moving along. We still have 15 minutes left, so we can do quite a bit on here. All right, so number 22, number 23. Number 22 is this equation. It is an inequality. If it's an inequality, things that we'll be looking for are solid and dotted lines. And other things we'll be looking for is if we have it shaded appropriately. And then obviously, we want the graph to be the right way. You know, if you have this dotted and I'm looking for this solid, you're probably going to miss two points. One, you had the graph wrong. Two, you didn't realize it was supposed to be solid or dotted. So, Crystal, first problem, is it solid or dotted? Uh, it's a solid avenue. What? Got it, yeah. Got it because of this. All right, what is my y-intercept? This is set up a slope-intercept form. What's my y-intercept? How much? One, two, three, four. In the y-direction. You asked about this yesterday. How do I know where to start with the one over two? Where do you think? Do I start where I have a point, or do I start where there's no point? Huh? What would make sense? If I were to say, I want you to start here, and I want you to walk five this way, and three that way, and then someone was way over here, wasn't starting there, and they walk five this way and three this way. Did that person and this person get to the same spot? No. So should I start where the point is, or should I start at some arbitrary location on the ground? Your choice. How do you not know? Where? You really don't know? Yeah, start where the point is. Okay, so starting here. Start. So using this, I'm going to go up one, right two. And Crystal says it's dotted. Now I like picking zero, zero because zero, zero happens to be a really easy point to pick. Zero, zero also doesn't interfere with our graph. And I'm looking to see where it's true. So if I plug zero, zero in, where that's an x, that's a y, plug it in. So I'm going to get zero is less than one half times zero plus four. So I get zero is less than four. Yes. That works. What? Yeah. What? That way. Uh, zero, zero, plug zero in here, plug zero in there. You with me? Looking for the true. Woo, shade down here. So uh, that's probably a three-point problem. First point is if you have your graph going the right way. Second point is if you realize it's solid or dotted. Third point is that you shaded the right region. Make sense? Cool. Uh, second problem. Second problem is kind of set up in a way that we could do it pretty easily. What do you think? Cover. I like it. Woo! 2x equals 12. So x equals 6. Cover method negative 6y equals 12. y equals negative 2. Solid or dotted crystal? Yeah. Zero, zero seems like a really good test point because it's really easy to use, and it also doesn't interfere with our graph, and it happens to be on the other side. Wait, is dotted without a line underneath or with a line underneath? Yeah, without. This, this, dotted. What? She said dotted. She said dotted. She said dotted. I was right there. Dude, I was with her. I'm sorry. You know what, those, you're, you're behind her, so the... the what happened was she said solid and it bounced off me and it came to you as a dotted message. I apologize. I'll try, I will use a mirror next time and go like this, like the laser. Yeah. All right, uh, zero, zero works. So two times zero, minus six times zero. Zero is less than 12. Zero is less than 12. Yes. Yep. Everything up here is true. Shade all up here. Woohoo! All right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Hey, what do you think? Number 21 looked like a good one to do? No. No? Yes? All right, let's try it. Uh, clear. Okay. So they gave you a graph. They want you to figure out the equation that goes with it. It looks like it crosses down here at 3, I believe. And this is number 21. And it looks like I go up to... Okay. So... 
They just want us to figure out the equation. So what's some definite information we can figure out about this? The y-intercept. The y-intercept. So the y-intercept is what letter usually? It's usually B. Look, I got B. What is B equal to? Okay, that's going to go right there. Okay, do you think, because of what I've looked at on my graph, that I might know some more information? To what, what's two over one? The slope. How do I do that? Well, I look and I realize I counted, oh, from this point to here, I went up one, up two, up two, and right one. Right one. So that means slope is up right. So slope is 2 over 1. And I can shorten that by saying slope is what? 2. Okay? And that is going to go here. Do I have enough information for my equation? I do. Y equals 2x minus 3. Could I put plus negative 3? Heck yeah, same thing. That's it. All right, if you would, when you take a look at 17, 18, 19, or 20, any of those that are sticking out to you going, uh-oh, 20? Okay. I can see how 20 might be goofy. Can I clear this? Number 20. Y equals 8. Y equals 8. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? It's a straight line. It's a what line? It's a horizontal line. Ooh. Magic. Horizontal line. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's what it looks like. Now, guys and girls, what does x equals 8 look like? It's a vertical line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So vertical is x equals, horizontal is y equals. 17, 18, 19, did that all look okay? Looks like 17 and 18, you find the y-intercept, you use the slope to find the second point. And number 19, we would use the? Government. Government. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do what? No. You want to see number 19? Yeah. Can I do it quick? Ready? You're okay. Shh. Okay, ready? 2x equals 10, so x equals? Five. Done. That's all it is. Every time. Okay? All right. Got enough time. We're doing good. Woo! Um, so let's look at... 13 through 16. So 13, they want parallel lines. Parallel lines have the exact same slope. And then perpendicular lines have opposite sign reciprocal. So a parallel slope, if I had a slope of 3 over 5, a parallel slope would be 3 over 5. Same thing. If I had a slope of 3 over 5, if I wanted a perpendicular slope, it's the opposite reciprocal, meaning I'm going to flip the fraction over and change the sign. So if I have a slope of 3 over 5, what would a perpendicular slope be to 3 over 5? Negative 5 over 3. Okay? So, 13. I have this. Question. Do I know the slope? This is number 13. Do I know the slope as they're both written right now? I do. I do. I have a slope of this. And what's the other slope? There you go. That's my slope. One set up in slope intercept form, and the other one is set up in point slope form. Okay? Now, I, I might be crazy, which y'all knew that already. Don't hold it against me. Negative one half and negative one half, I think, are the exact same. No! And if they're the exact same, that means these lines are. The exact same slopes means they are parallel. All 
Parallel, they don't intersect. Same M. Where? Well, hang on, let me stay here for a second. All right, number 14. Number 14, I get y equals 3x minus 7, and then I get 6x minus 2y equals 12. Do I know the slope of the first one? <coughs> Do I know the slope up there? What's the slope here? 3x. 3. That's M. Do I know the slope on the second one? No, not right off the bat. So the second one, I'll have to solve for y. So I'm going to get y all by itself. Still with me? Still with me? Do I know the slope yet? No, I need it to be y equals, not negative 2y equals. So what would I do to get y all by itself right now? Divide everything by negative 2. And then that cancels. y equals negative 6 over negative 2 is positive 3. X comes along to the right, negative 6. What's the slope of this one? Huh? 3? Is that the same as that? What can you tell me about these lines? They are parallel. Okay. So why or why not? Slopes are equal, therefore parallel. Why? Because. No, that's not the answer. All right. Let me go down to the perpendicular ones. 15, I have y equals negative 3 over 5x plus 14, and y plus 8 equals 5 over 3 times x minus 12. 1 is given in slope-intercept form. 1 is given in point slope. What is the slope of the top one? Negative 3 over 5. Okay. What is the slope of the other one? 5 over 3. Is negative 3 over 5 and 5 over 3 opposite sign reciprocals? Meaning positive versus negative flipped over. Yes, no? Yes? That works? These are, so this is like saying A over B, negative B over A. I flip them over, I change the signs. Flip them over, change the signs. These are perpendicular. Perpendicular. All right. Uh, number 16, I have uh, y equals 6x plus 2. y equals 6x plus 6. What's the slope of the first one? 6. What's the slope of the second one? 6. Are they the same? Are they parallel? Yes. So are they perpendicular? No. No. Not perpendicular. There you go. All right. We good? Mac, you said you wanted one other one, Dustin. Yeah. All right. Number seven. Number seven. I like it. We got just enough time. Zero, four, still with me? Negative two, negative eight. Still with me? First step is label x1, y1, x2, y2. You okay? x1, y1, x2, y2. So slope equation is this. I want you to write down because you need to know it. Okay, so slope equals negative 8 minus 4, negative 2 minus 0, negative 12 over negative 2 equals 6. Good? Next, use a point slope. Okay? So y minus y1, y minus 4 equals slope 6 times uh, x minus 0. And then they want us in directions to have it solved for y, correct? So I'm going to distribute here. So y minus 4 equals 6x plus 0. Add 4. Done. Okay? So th uh, three steps. We are just about out of here. Guys and girls, I will be in my office today from noon on. Just study over this. <coughs> Test is tomorrow. Test is tomorrow. Got it? This is recorded.